totally fucking agree. Well, we hopefully we'll be able to find another planet to leave this one soon. <laughs> it's in space, here we come. Yeah. So, have you a lot watched Lost in Space at all? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We started watching that one, but we're watching another one called Another Life that is also space oriented, and that yeah. one is wild it's ride. Fucking, it's all over the place. It's amazing. <laughs> That's pretty much how Lost in Space gets. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, so on Christmas Day, we actually had a very awesome thing, and the uh, the Webb Telescope finally launched. Yay! Uh, it's been twenty five years in the making. And wow. for the last 25 years, almost a quarter of NASA's budget has gone to building this one telescope. And they dropped. But it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> they dropped it? <laughs> yeah, we talked, about it. we talked about the launch a while back, but um, it was delayed because it was supposed to launch on the 18th. It was delayed for another reason, but also because they dropped like a really important spot. And it was fine, but they had to run additional tests to make sure everything was okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I think it was like a strap that popped and it fell. And they were like, wait, I think it's good. <laughs> so this thing is uh, a marvel, like an engineering marvel. It's really crazy to think about. Uh, so most of the telescopes actually designed and built to be in direct space itself. Uh mm. And also, it's an infrared telescope. Oh. So, compared to the Hubble telescope, the Hubble telescope can get the UV lights and all the other spectrum of lights, but the infrared light is very hard for the Hubble telescope to distinguish. So, we have a good idea of information about the universe coming from the tel Hubble telescope. Like, we were able to actually get the whole universe map. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No, I've but, seen it. Yeah. Uh, so this is telescope is actually going to let us pinpoint some of the most ancient stars in our universe and actually deep dive and explore them. And um, the Webb telescope will not be orbiting the Earth. It's going to be in a special zone that's close enough to the earth that it won't float away but far enough away to where it's not technically in orbit of the earth anymore uh it has a lifespan of 10 years um uh, it has enough fuel to propel and maintain itself for 10 years but after that uh unless we get some robots that can go and fix it it's not really likely to do anything after that so we got about 10 years and uh, so it launched on the 25th of December. Uh, the estimated flight path is about six days. As six days, then it will launch from the rocket and actually start separating. In about six months, it will be fully set up and in use. So it, it's a we're we're at the start of a long process. I'm excited. It's been what you said. You said 25 years in the making. Like, what's six more months? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the crazy thing to think about, right? Like, it's, they've been building this thing for 25 years. Uh, it's on, It's going to take six months to uh, build itself, and then it's only going to last nine and a half years. Damn it, so. only nine and a half? It's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to get some, some updates kind of, by then. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> right. We're going to have to have like an unmanned vehicle or something that can go to refuel it to extend its life longer. But currently there are no plans or nothing in the works to refuel it. Depends on what we find, right? Right. Uh, so this is what they believe is going to be our best chance to actually uh, find some kind of life out in the galaxy. Because, so, we all understand thermal, in in space, you're muted, Peach, I think. Yeah, Kiddo yeah. came over to show me something. Oh. I told him I didn't so, need to go. In space, 
it's a lot more likely to be cold than hot, right? Mm -hmm. So a thermal image you would think would help pinpoint things. You, you know, you could take a large thermal image and then help pinpoint things quicker. And hopefully we can find something out there. That's so exciting. I'm excited. Perfect sweater to wear today, Puzzled. Hey! <laughs> I mean, just the the amount of technology and parts that we've designed and built just for this thing is amazing. I don't know. I'm super excited. I just want to see the first picture come back. Me too. All right, I want to see. So, <laughs> I was really yeah. bummed to find out that it, it was going to take six months to get the images back. But I'm like, can you imagine? Like, it's going to be working for... I don't know, a couple of months, and then we're going to get those images back, and what will they have? That's just amazing. Finder now. <laughs> so, the everything that went wrong with the Hubble, right? So, I don't know if y'all remember, but when the Hubble was first launched, it, uh, it wasn't focused, so they couldn't get good pictures. They actually had to go, like, install uh, a lens to focus it so they could actually see the pictures. Well, this one has an autofocus. About <laughs> <Right>. time. <laughs> uh, Does so it have Hubble... a manual focus that we could control as well? It probably does. But again, the whole thing is designed to pretty much work autonomously. Yeah. That's good. So, Just worry about if it focuses on the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like the Hubble has a glass uh, lens in a that we use well this one actually has a gold and beryllium lens that we're using answer so yeah really high up there uh and yeah just the amount of technology they had to put into it because so many parts are actually exposed to the like raw space itself so like they it could get there and this whole thing could just fall apart and not work at all and then we're going to feel really stupid because it's been like $10 billion to get to this point. Hopefully <laughs> <laughs> not. But I hope, I hope this helps, you know, vitalize NASA a little bit because they're starting to fall to the side. They really are. Like, space. Like, granted, we, we need to explore more about our oceans than we do with space but still it's it's important to research i mean I, I if i were in power i would not take money away from that organization but that's just me nasa's like government Mars. funded right yeah yes yeah the national the aeronautic space administration yeah yeah no it just seems like the majority of the thing government things government funded are starting to fall by the wayside well, yeah, it's amazing yeah. feat for scientists. No. <laughs> like, no, it's an amazing feat, this whole telescope. And I think what NASA's next big project is Mars. That was, what, like, in 16 years when we went to NASA? I don't think that... I don't think NASA's going to win the race to Mars. That just doesn't make sense. Like, they haven't even started yet, right? And Starship and is almost done. <laughs> By the time NASA actually starts their trip to Mars, Starship's going to be in orbit around the Earth. Well, isn't um, aren't uh, SpaceX and NASA working closely together to to get that going? To at least like first well, build yeah. a spaceship I mean, to get to Mars. Yeah, well, so NASA's involved, but no, SpaceX is building Starship oh, on their own. Okay. Now. Uh, SpaceX does carry a lot of things and shuttle a lot of things for NASA to the International Space Station. And that's when we saw uh, the Dragon go up there and land at the mm -hmm. space station. So, but I just, I don't see how NASA can keep up with SpaceX at this point. Yeah, there's no way. Like, NASA... I think... Go ahead. I think, I just think NASA's way better at the whole... Uh, Slow and steady approach. Mm -hmm. uh oh, Norcla! Miss you, bro. What? Oh, Thank what? you for those five gifted subs. 
Oh, wait, I got North something Blood. for this. Shout out to Norkla. Wow. Wow. We miss wow. you, Norkla. Hope you're doing good. I heard you were like doing some major career moves. <laughs> really? Last I read, yeah. So underwater. You know, the the way you look at it is, yeah, it took NASA twenty five years to launch this satellite, right? This this mark or telescope. Mm -hmm. So NASA's really good at the slow and steady, and then if they have time to do their stuff. And I think space travel has got more into the forefront. And people are like, I'm ready to go to space. So yeah. I think that's where SpaceX has the upper hand. I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Elon Musk and Elon Musk successfully privatized space travel. Like no one else has done this. Not Blue Origin. Not um, uh, the other competitor. I, f I forget their name. Boeing. Not Boeing with their Boeing side Galaxy. project. Yeah. Like, it's it's SpaceX that has been at the forefront the entire time, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big... I, I think uh, SpaceX privatized it, and I think Blue Origin is going to monetize it. That's about right. Yep. But <laughs> legit, it, go watch Lost in Space. It's a great story about traveling to another galaxy and trying to establish a colony mm -hmm. i've seen the and first couple of episodes that's great yeah it hits its stride the second season okay it was kind of like uh <laughs> they i think we only had to watch like two or maybe three episodes it was it crash landed in the ice and then the little boy found something in the ice the robot and then yeah. i can't remember what happened after that but we've been watching Another Life, which is an alien artifact, lands on Earth, and they figure out where it's broadcasting signals to. And it's, um, what was it, like six months away So with the technology that they had. So they're able, they're, they send a crew over to this other planet to try to figure out why they were here. And it's crazy. It's, it's Space a stuff like makes you like, whew. Yeah. Because in reality, that's a complete possibility. We just don't know about it yet. <laughs> like, and, and that's something that this telescope could tell us. Like, we could literally find another civilization just by their heat signatures. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Intense, Norkla. So Norkla said, the Mars plan of Elon Musk is kind of like Ascent. The Ascent, where people can't afford to travel to the planet, so they work off their debt as indentured servants. Depending on what jobs they have for indents, I'm about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> like, yeah, I want to go to Mars, but hopefully Bitcoin hits a million dollars and I can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I want my own spaceship, and I'm going to name it the Bebop. The Bebop? <laughs> the Bebop. Good. I don't care, damn it. Dude, I'm so glad that they canceled that after the first season. Oh, you, know, so happy. you know that there's a uh, petition to uncancel it, and there's another petition to keep it canceled. What? That's funny. No, the second they left Ayn's, uh, Ayn on the planet and flew away, I was like, I'm done. This is dead to me. Yeah, they never did that in the show. Well, yeah, because I mean. was a genius in the show. <laughs> well, that wraps up another great episode. And don't forget to join our amazing and supportive community on Discord. In our Discord, you can find game nights, watch parties, food picks, Dungeons and Dragons, and more. What's not to love about that? We have a little something for everyone. Head over to our website, officialmillennials.com, and you'll find more info especially our featured Gamer of the Week. Speaking of something for everyone, we have a book club. We read a book almost every month and talk through it together. We also have a special perk for our subs to discuss other books in a series called Chapter 2. Don't forget to swing by YouTube and uh, drop us a follow at Official Millennials. You can also find us on Twitter at Mills Official. We appreciate all the support and y'all have a good one.
This is an official Millennials production.